Hey, how's it going? I am Brandon Lee and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while, I do apologize. I've been working on a bunch of other projects, but today I'm back and I'm gonna teach you about how to edit your music soundtrack for your video for maximum impact. So here I'm assuming that you've shot what you want to shoot, you've picked out the piece of music that you want, and you've lined everything up in editing, and it's just not really hitting the way you want it to hit, it's not having the right impact, you feel like it's all just a little blah. I have a bunch of different little tricks that I use, and today I'm going to teach you a few of those. And the music I'm going to use today comes from Artlist.io, which is where I get most of my music for my YouTube videos. You subscribe for a couple hundred bucks a year, and then you get access to unlimited music that's all pretty high quality, and you can download it and use it in your commercial projects, your non-commercial projects. You don't have to worry about the rights for the music or how you're using it. It's just simple, and it's cost-effective, and the music is good. First thing I'm going to talk about is how I line up the hit points of my music with important points in my video. This is the number one way to give your music impact in your video. When the beat drops. When there's a big orchestra hit. You want something important to happen in the video. If you miss those important hits, then you diminish the power of the synergy of that music with your video images. So take advantage of every cue that the music gives you to increase the drama. Now this can get a little tricky if you're changing around your edit a bunch in post, because maybe in draft one, you had this big hit line up perfectly with a big cut in your video. But then when you get to draft five, it doesn't line up anymore and you don't know how to get it back there. What I do in order to keep that hit point lined up with my edit as I'm moving stuff around is I take advantage of the Final Cut Pro X magnetic timeline. Now if you're not familiar with the magnetic timeline, basically what happens is as you move clips around in the timeline, other clips collapse and adjust themselves. So you've got this constantly mutating timeline, which some people really hate, but I love it because I can choose which clips stay joined together and which clips I can let go and move independently. So I make sure that I link up my music cue point with the shot that I want it to align with so that those two move as a single unit as I edit. Or if I drag around video clips around that point, the music hit point stays adjoined to the video clip. If you don't use Final Cut X, you can just set a marker at the hit point in the music and then set another marker on the clip that you want it to align with and make sure that those markers always line up whenever you move other stuff around. So basically all you're doing is giving yourself a guidepost that will let you realign the music every time you make other edits. Now say you have multiple hit points that you want to line up on a piece of music. You can set markers at the hit points of each of those pieces that you want to align with certain video clips and then split the clip into two pieces or three pieces or however many you need and then crossfade each of those pieces of the music track at a point where you think the audience will least notice them. Sometimes I try to find a point where the beat drops out of the music or it's a little bit more arrhythmic or somehow amorphous so that it's easier for me to disguise a crossfade and mask the fact that I'm slicing the music apart. There's really no one answer to this because every piece of music is different. You just kind of have to mess around with it. Now what about retiming the music? In other words, what about speeding up the music, slowing down the music in order to make it fit the video? With some genres, you might be able to get away with this, like EDM. It's pretty commonly sped up and slowed down, so your audience probably won't think it's too weird. But in general, I try to keep the music at the tempo it was recorded out of respect for the composer because they set that tempo for a reason. It sounds best at its native tempo. And if you try to speed it up or slow it down, you'll either change the pitch or you'll introduce some audio artifacts. Really, you kind of want to stay with the original pace of the music and work around that. And if it doesn't fit, maybe try just finding another piece of music. But one of the great things about using EDM music is that you can pretty much create a break in it anytime you want. 
All you do is scrub to a portion of the music where the beat drops out and you go into sort of a breakdown section, slice that out and drop it in. And as long as you line it up pretty well with the downbeat in the actual song, it'll sound more or less natural and your audience probably won't think about it too much. It won't be too distracting. Now, another way to create more impactful moments with your music is to create pauses where the music cuts out completely and it gets filled in either with natural sound or a little bit of vlog or just somebody speaking up, any interesting little moment that you wanna fill in there. Now my tip with creating these music breaks is try to be surprising yet also appropriate. You can create a music break that just sounds horrible if it's in the wrong place, or you can create a music break that catches people off guard, but then also seems somehow inevitable to them so that there's this little aha moment where they realize why you did it. Watch other videos, start to notice how they use music breaks, why they use music breaks, and come up with ideas based on what you've seen and you know, invent some new ones of your own. One surefire way to screw up the impact of your music is to put music with lyrics under dialogue in your video in a way that it conflicts. I'm gonna demonstrate some shooting techniques and you can come along and watch. Or to put music under other music that's playing in your video. If you absolutely must do one of these two things, you have to be really careful about how you do it. One cheap and easy way to make your music conflict less with dialogue in the video is to lower the volume a few decibels and to put an EQ on it so that you drop down the portions of the music that are in the same audio range as your vocals. So I would take around one kilohertz to six kilohertz down three or even six decibels, just depending on the music track and where the dialogue sits. The way I would gauge this is just listen with headphones, listen with speakers, listen with some other speakers, and see if I can hear the dialogue over the music in each case. I'm gonna demonstrate some shooting techniques and you can come along and watch. Now how about music under other music? For instance, if there's music in my scene, like that I recorded with the actual microphone of my camera while I was recording the scene, and I want to keep that on top of my music soundtrack underneath it, what I try to do is I try to pick a music soundtrack that doesn't have as much presence as the music that was recorded with my camera's mic. So if the music recorded with the camera's mic is like a band or something, then I'll try to have the music soundtrack underneath it be more ambient, be something without a beat. What you really want to avoid is having two beats that conflict. And finally, be on the lookout for opportunities to get creative with how your music lines up with your video. Again, surprising your audience is always a good thing, as long as it feels appropriate and hopefully sort of inevitable in the edit. I'm gonna leave you with one more piece of inspiration. I created a playlist for Artlist.io that's gonna be featured on their website. These are all tracks that I've used in my videos in the past that I feel fit my style. And I'm gonna play a little snippet from the tracks that I picked. So take a listen and enjoy. All right, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please help me get back on track by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and I will see you again soon.